this video, I'm going to show you how easy it is to select facing operations with HSM works. Quickly create great toolpath and the power you have to modify and simulate that you get what you need. Now, facing might be the first toolpath you need to use on your part. It is a simple toolpath that will establish a good planar surface if, for example, your part is saw cut or has an uneven surface. Many times this could become what we call a datum and where you are going to take your measurements from. Let us take a look at this simple mold core inside SOLIDWORKS. We will select facing from the CAM command manager and as always inside HSMWorks we first get prompted to select our tool. I will access the HSMWorks tool library and don't forget that we have a lot of great options in here. HSMWorks already have a big selection of tools and you can also set up your own custom folders where you can modify or create your favorite tools and sizes. I will select the sample library and you will see I have a 2 inch face mill. Face mills, also called shell mills, are normally your favorite choice. They cover a big surface area and therefore can quickly create a flat finish on your part. Now check out that orange box around the part. That is the stock boundary box. If we just want HSMWorks to face the entire top of our part, we don't even have to select any geometry. Simply hit the green check mark and with a couple of clicks we have a toolpath created. We can now take a look at the result with our HSMWorks simulation. Adjust the speed with the slide bar. And that is a quick part facing to prepare the raw stock for further machining. We can easily access the toolpath again with a right click and hit edit. Now if you are pretty new to HSMWorks, let me just explain the 5 tabs as we are going through this video. The reason that HSMWorks is so easy to learn is that the options you need is done in a logical fashion throughout the software. So we have already been inside the tool library. We access that through this button. And I will go into the tool library and switch my cutter to a half inch end mill so I can show you a few other tricks with the facing operation. Notice beneath here we have all the control we need in regards to the tools, feeds and speeds. The next tab is the geometry tab. Here we can specify selection on our SOLIDWORKS part. So as you see here, if I select stock contours and then select the face of our island, we will see the orange boundary around the perimeter of that face. As we can select faces on the SOLIDWORKS part, we can also select edges. And here's a quick SOLIDWORKS tip. If you want to deselect something that you have already selected, just select it again. Test that out anywhere inside SOLIDWORKS. Now let me select the bottom edge and you will see the boundary now becomes slightly bigger because it now are taking the draft of this island into consideration, assuring that we are machining the whole top surface. Now you saw me selecting the bottom edge and you can see that the orange boundary box is still at the top level. That is because of the height tab that is located right next to the geometry tab. In here you will see terminology that is very familiar to you if you are a SOLIDWORKS user. Down at the bottom here I can control the orange box and I could for example add 30,000 stock to the top of the part. Or just as easily go minus and machine more material off if needed. Really giving you the flexibility you need on the fly and notice how the orange box is following our entry in the graphics area. Let me just reset back to zero and select the green check mark. Now when simulating you will see that we have the perfect toolpath to clean up the top of the island. Let me switch over to another SOLIDWORKS configuration so we can change the part here a little and we can do a quick recap. 
So again, you select the facing operation and then you select the tool. And we do not need to select any chains or geometry if we just want to face off the stock boundary. Now we can right click and hit edit. And if we want to control the tool path within a specific area, we can select either an edge or a face right on our SOLIDWORKS model. Now let's go back into our property manager and look at the passes tab. The passes tab gives us some great control over our tool. For example, we could change the angular of the pass to 45 degrees. Hit the green check mark. Or we could switch it back into 90 if that is preferred. We can also change the pass extension. This would be great if there was stock on the side of our part we might want to remove in another setup. I also want to show you the multiple depth selection. That might be handy if there was a lot of material to face off. So the passes tab is everything to do with our tool in the cut. The last tab is the linking tab. And that is the one that controls everything about our tool when it's not engaged with metal. So I could change the lead in to something like two inches and you will see that our extra cut is still the same, but the entry and exit of the part has been changed. Now, one of the reasons that HSM works is so easy to learn is that the menu stays the same. Our five tabs, tool, geometry, height, passes, and links are the same on all the tool path. This means that not only have you quite possibly just applied your first tool path with HSM works, but you can easily use the other types of tool path because the layout is simply the same.